Welcome to Monza, where we will see the third race weekend of the 1992 DTM European Tour. The main question this season seems to be, can anyone beat Audi? Well, we actually did that in the second race of last weekend, giving Mercedes a glimpse of hope in an otherwise terrible weekend, when their cars seem to be the slowest overall. Maybe now is the opportunity to gain momentum in the temple of speed where engine power is everything. There is a twist, however, as it is raining heavily out there. We start from P4 just behind another Audi 123, our highest grid position so far this season. Can we convert it into another podium, maybe even a win? We're about to find out as we go racing in Monza. Okay, here we are. This is gonna be a very, very interesting one, a very wet one, because the rain will not stop throughout. So race one, race two, it will all be wet throughout the races. Um, so yeah, we have to, to deal with this here. But P4, this is actually not too bad, so not too much of spray to negotiate. There goes Klaus Ludwig in the background. He had a fantastic start. Oh, contact with one of the Audis. Contact with Klaus Ludwig. Not ideal. Wow. The Audi of, of championship leader Haupt was on two wheels there. Hit us in the side. We lost the spot there. Oh, selecting the wrong gear. Not. I don't want to retire because of that once again, like in the first race in Hockenheim. So I need to really be careful with that. While also trying to talk you through the race and um, actually keeping the car on track, which is not the easiest task in these, task in these conditions. <laughs> but um, I'm doing my best. Let's see, there is Klaus Ludwig. pressure from Haupt. The Audis are running away with it. These conditions seem to help them even more. They're quicker than they were before. And they have been absolutely dominant so far. So somebody needs to file an investigation because this is this is honestly very sauce that they are so so damn quick. I feel a little overpowered. How oh, about this might be a good opportunity against Ludwig? Careful with the curve there. Through Curva Grande we go. Ah. Oh. Okay. The Audis, four seconds, they are away already. This can't be true. This can't be right. Look at the front right, it's <laughs> it's stone cold. Oh, that was a bit too deep. Ah, oh, shouldn't look at uh, how the temperature of my front right is. I should actually drive. Damn. 
That's not good. That's not good at all. Look at that, you can barely see that a car is ahead. Or where the car is. You can see that there is a car ahead because of the spray. But, but to locate it, there are very, very dim... Ooh, brake lights of that car. Oh, damn. That would have been an opportunity. But not with me releasing the clutch too early. Getting a good exit out of Parabolica. Which we didn't really get. Even caught a little bit of grass there. Oh, he's getting away once again. That's crazy. Wow. Especially at the high speeds that you obviously have at Monza, it gets even tougher to see the car ahead because the spray is more intense then. Okay, this is an opportunity. Hello? Come on. That worked. And let's chase after the Audis. Seven seconds we are behind the race leader. Unbelievable. Seven seconds. But I must say, even in these conditions, these cars are very fun to race. Still 7.7 .7 seconds. We've lost a bit to those at the front. We're not losing too much compared to Haupt. Oh, that was a little bit of a lag there. And another one. And another one. Let's hope the game catches itself again. No, it does not. What the hell? You've got... You can't be serious. Come on. You can't be serious. This is just... Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, about these legs. Um, this is... This, this happens usually just once a race, and then it is fine. Does anyone know what could be the issue here? Because usually, Automobilista 2 runs without any issue, but then sometimes, in the middle of the race, there is these weird legs uh, where you can can't do anything about and then it works again for the rest of this race I don't know like like a spike where it suddenly I don't know so if anyone has any idea please let me know because this is surely frustrating because that has well m rendered some of the work we've done this race undone and that's frustrating we've lost only one spot this time, and the car is still fine, but, uh, yeah, it cost us points and a potential fight for B4. Whew, okay. Well, I mean, after that moment with the lag we had there, that was our race pretty much done, but it was very interesting. It was a learning experience for the last race. I was able to just focus on myself deliver the fastest lap times I could do in these conditions with the track seemingly getting worse even um, yeah so I, we might be a bit better prepared for the second race as we finish the first one in P6 so this is at least 
a few good points for us on the board. And we will have a second chance in race two. So you see the um, results of race one on your screen right now. And we'll continue to race two now. Okay, here is for another attempt. Once again, we're going into this race from P4. And let's see that we get a very good start now. And try to take the foul to the Audis who seem unbeatable in these conditions. Even more unbeatable than they have seemed in Spa and Hockenheim. Good getaway we do get. This is the first... step towards success that actually worked quite well up into p3 okay very good we got a few training laps practice laps at the end of race one running in no man's land yet let's put them to good use and i will focus once again to maximize the result here, but we're immediately under attack from Hans Joachim Stuck there. Whoa. They're so quick. Already they're starting to get away. Not a good exit out of Lesmo 2. There goes Stuck. Damn! They have so much grip, they are driving circles around me. Okay, there goes Klaus Ludwig. Come on, Slipstream, do your job. Oh, I pushed him a bit there, didn't want to do that. But on the other hand, that's touring car racing. So, uh, rubbing really is racing. Oh, he's round the outside. Having the inside towards Stella Roggia. But we're late on the brakes. And we stay ahead. How am I supposed to keep that for almost eight more laps? Jelinski and Bila once again. Off into the distance. Ah, Lesmo 2 really struggling through there. It should probably stay in third gear there. Yeah, it's stuck once again. Come on! Ah, oh, damn! Clutch! Oh, I need to be a bit more careful there on the clutch. Well, we still wanted to turn in there, but we are still alongside. Somewhat. Really drifting out of Parabolica. Oh, this is the opportunity for Ludwig! Down into fifth. 
Oh, Haup this time, only down an eighth. So he must have had a terrible opening laps to this race, opening two laps. Three wide towards turn one. This is going to be super, super interesting. We make it out on top. Oh, Ludwig ahead of uh, Stuck. That's great news for us at Mercedes. Oh, that, that kid, that's, that's great now. Oh no, 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 no. Yeah, it doesn't help if you, of course, mess up Ascari afterwards. No! Ah, come on! Oh, and there are the others. This was a terrible, terrible mistake. Wow! How being ultra aggressive there against Hane. We immediately take revenge on him, even though we want the one being rammed off. Oh, and this is the first time we actually see a BMW, Chris Neeson, ahead of us. Towards Retifilia we go. Not really a corner, you want to go through side by side in the way the corner was back in those days. Because, well, there's barely a way to fit two cars alongside each other. Ah, this time it was not the game, this time it was us. Messing it up there. Oh, well, us. You're not. You don't have anything to do with my driving. That was all on me. Now you don't really see anything. You just have to trust that that, that no one of the cars ahead is falling off the road side by side through there. We try it. This is where we messed it up last lap. Works better this time. Nissan is still ahead. And everyone else is running away. So where do we break? Where do we break? That worked. Into Parabolica. We go past Chris Neeson. Four laps to go, I would love to finish on P4 and to get back into fourth. Two and a half laps to go and we are close to where I wanted to finish. Well, wow, Haupt is really aggressive. He must have been, he must be really mad about something that happened on the opening lap there. What cost him so many spots. He really just pushed Ludwig out of the way there, going into Ascari. Well, was not a good lap by ourselves. Not a very good lap by me. Well, but Ludwig is trying to get back at him. Or at least that's what I think I can see. <laughs> Look at that. 
<laughs> side by side, I think they're approaching the next corner. This could end in tears. Still running in the same order, these two. Oh, what happened? Whoa! I was in neutral. Well, that is, I think, every chance we had of finishing in P4 out of the window. I was so busy watching these two battle, I completely forgot to select the gear. And now Haupt is running away from Ludwig already. And it happened again? Why? Oh, is this something with our gearbox? Oh no, there is an issue with our gearbox. Second gear, I think, is broken. Often, it's the, the second or third time this lap. When I put it into second, it just... It just fell out. It just selected neutral again. So let's try to... But it's impossible to go. to the final corner in, this, in third. Yeah. Seen that? The second gear is broken now, as well, due to my terrible use of the clutch and the gearbox that has been terrible this race. The second gear is now broken because... Yeah, seen that? Happened again. Now it's about bringing home P6. And there is two corners where we need second gear, which is the Ascari chicane and the Parabolica. One of them is coming up now. We survived this one. Chris Niesen is quite far back. So this should work. I think we should bring it home and see. Finishing in P6 twice. Ah, uh, this... This time a bit more was possible. Yeah, second gear is broken. Second gear is gone in this calm. But I'm, I'm not really surprised, considering how I used that gearbox throughout this race. But at least it's done! We finished both races in these conditions, and both occasion, on both occasions in the points, I think realistically in both races what was possible was P4 at the absolute maximum. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> yeah, second gear is really gone, look at that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, and these are the point scorers of race two in Monza. So once again, another Audi one, two, three, four, and uh, Ludwig 
in fifth, the first Mercedes. And the Drivers' Championship after Monza looks like this. Frank Bieler has taken the championship lead three points ahead of Haupt. And also in the championship, it is now an Audi 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, we are the first non-Audi, just four points ahead of Emmanuel Piro, who had a terrible home weekend without scoring any point here in Monza. And this is the championship of makes. Audi already in triple digits, almost double the points of Mercedes. And uh, Mercedes uh, manages to increase the gap to BMW, who sit in third. And that has been it for the third race weekend of our DTM 1992 European Tour. The next race will be at the Nürburgring and we will race at the full circuit, so including the Nordschleife. That is surely going to be a very interesting one and I hope to see you all there. Subscribe to help miss anything on this channel, leave a like if you did enjoy this video and I hope to see you all the next time. Until then, goodbye!